Hi and welcome to this lecture of our HubSpot free course here on YouTube. In this lecture, we're going to tackle import files. So there are different methods you can use to add contacts to your HubSpot CRM, right? Now, obviously, you know, we already learned in the previous lecture, we learned how you manually create a contact into HubSpot, right? That's by far the easiest, the most straightforward method. Now, sometimes you're working with a large database. How are you going to manually create a thousand contacts into your HubSpot CRM? Well, you're not going to do this, right? What you're going to do instead is you are going to to use another method for adding these contacts to your HubSpot CRM. A very easy to use method is import files. And this is what we're going to talk about in this lecture here. Just have one thing in mind. Sometimes HubSpot updates their user interface and they definitely do this much faster than I am capable of recording courses about their updates. And so depending on when you're watching this video here, it might be that things have changed a little bit. Okay. If by any chance you are, you know, in the middle of the process, you find that comparing my screen with yours, things look a little bit different. Add a comment for me below here and I'm going to answer according to the latest updated information about HubSpot. Okay. And obviously you can also do your own research. Uh, HubSpot has an excellent knowledge hub, which is where they post the most up-to-date information about the recent UI changes, right? Either way, let's go ahead and let's learn how to import a file of contacts into your HubSpot CRM importing contacts into HubSpot. So in the previous lecture, we learned how to create a contact, right? Manually. Well, you're not going to do this if you have a list of a hundred or even more, right? Contacts to, to add to HubSpot. You're not going to do this. Perhaps your email list is sitting on a Google spreadsheet. This is actually very common, a very common situation. And so if your list is already sitting in a Google spreadsheet, such as this one here, or if you are using another CRM and you exported your list of contacts from your other CRM and you want to import it into HubSpot, how do you do this? How do you import a list of contacts into HubSpot? This is also a manual method for data import, but in this case, we're doing this in bulk, right? So I have a list here. Of course, they are fictional contacts. I only have three and they're all fake, but you know, this is my list. I want to import this list into HubSpot. I want to have these three contacts created, Sarah, Mary, and Sam, another Sam. So how do I do this? The process is the following. First thing you need, you need to do is, let's just go back to the list. You need to make sure that the list is properly organized. Organized. What do we mean by that? Your list needs to have one data point in each and every column. Okay. So in this case here, I have Sarah in one column, Gilmore, which is Sarah's last name in another column. In another column, I have Sarah's email address and then phone number and then Australia, right? Which is the country. So I would not be able to do this. For instance, if, you know, in the same column, I had Sarah Gilmore, Sarah at the dragonfly.com, right? So I'm mixing up name and email address in the first, in the, in the same cell. This doesn't really Really work. Why? Because HubSpot is mapping this information with HubSpot's own properties. So if you notice my column header names, they're actually HubSpot properties. First name, last name, email address, mobile phone number, country, region. These are properties, right? And so every property needs to be in a separate column so that HubSpot understands what, what, what you have in your file. Okay. How do I know the names of the properties? For example, I want to add people's role, right? But I don't remember what is the HubSpot properties name for role. How do I find that? Out about this. The place to look at is settings, properties, and here you're going to look at your list of properties. If I type role, I have one property called by role. Mm, that's not really what I'm looking for. Let's just type job job title. Here you go. This is what I'm looking at. I'm looking at the job title. I'm looking at adding information on people's job titles. And so in this case here, the information that I want to add to my file is called job title. So I'm adding a property as column header. Okay. This is the appropriate way of importing data into HubSpot, each and every data point in a different column. So I'm not going to add job title, but you get the idea here, right? So column header names, they map HubSpot properties. You're going to understand why later on. Let me just download this file here in CSV so that it's ready for my upload. And let me go back to HubSpot. In my CRM, I'm going to click on where it says import. Now I have to choose import from files, sync from apps or migrate your data. What we're doing now is we're importing from a file. So we're going to select this option here, import a file. How would you like to start? Add it to the CRM. This is what I'm looking for. Starting a data import 
just so they know you have the option to go ahead with custom events and opt out emails. What does this mean? Well, if you're importing data from another CRM and this other CRM mapped out behavioral, tracked behavioral data, you can use this option here for your import. And also, if you're importing a list of contacts that you don't really want to market to them, you just want to have them there for reference, you can go ahead with this option here. List of contacts to opt out of emails. For now, we're just doing a normal, regular, simple import. So we're going to go ahead with the first option. What kind of data is in our file? Challenge for you now. What kind of data are we importing? Pause the video for a few seconds and think about it. What kind of data are we importing? Let's go back to our file. Well, we're importing people, right? Sarah, I'm only importing data about a person. A person's first name, last name, email address, mobile phone number, country. This is all information related to people. These are all contact properties. And so what I'm doing here is I'm importing a list of contacts. But Talita, what about the other options? Why are they here? Because I have the ability to import data about contacts and deals or companies and deals, or contacts and companies and deals and tickets, and so on and so on. So I can import multiple ty multiple types of data into HubSpot, and later we're going to learn how to do this. For now, we're going to go ahead with the option contacts, and we're going to click next. Okay, drag and drop or choose a file. Let me just get the file that I got from my export, and let me edit here. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose how to import contacts. This question here is a little bit confusing. Create an update or only create or only update. Look, what you have to think about here is the following. This list that you're importing into HubSpot, do some, are some of these contacts already in your CRM? Yes or no? Because if they are, you can get HubSpot to only update existing information about them. What is this? Well, you know, imagine that um, I already have Sarah Gilmore in my HubSpot CRM. She's there already. She's already a contact. But when I imported Sarah last time, I didn't have her mobile phone number. Okay. And so now I'm actually re-importing Sarah. What's going to happen? HubSpot is not going to create a second Sarah Gilmore. HubSpot is going to simply update Sarah's contact with the value, this value here inside the property phone number. So HubSpot is simply updating the contact. Okay, so if by any chance you're importing data into HubSpot and HubSpot already has that data, you have the ability to simply get HubSpot to, to update existing data about those records. Okay, when in doubt, go ahead with this option here, create an update contacts. So if these contacts here, they don't exist, HubSpot is going to create them. If they exist, HubSpot is going to update them. Hey, but how does HubSpot know if someone already exists or not? We have this thing called unique identifiers. A unique identifier is what HubSpot needs to, you know, be able to identify if someone is already there or not. Email address is a contact identifier, meaning if sub HubSpot already identifies this, you know, this email in the CRM, meaning HubSpot will look at all the contacts and identify that we already have this email address inside the CRM, then HubSpot is going to, you know, understand that we're looking to update this contact with the other information here. Okay. Let me go ahead, make sure that you have the right language selected here. And then you're going to map your import file with HubSpot properties. So here, what you're doing is you're simply making sure that HubSpot is doing the right thing. So HubSpot is updating Sarah, Mary, and Sam as first names, which are contact properties. HubSpot is updating you more and OK as last names, which are also contact properties. So everything here is correct, right? Sometimes it's not really the case. Sometimes when you import a file, HubSpot sort of misunderstands something. For instance, let's say that was importing data on both contacts and companies. And here, instead of saying contact properties, I was, I was seeing something like company properties, country region. Then, you know, there is a company property called country region. Basically, HubSpot would want to make sure that I want to update this as a contact property and not a company property, right? So here you need to make sure that you have the right object and the right property names selected. Next, this is my import name. Perfect. Do I want to have a HubSpot list created from this import? Yes or no? This is optional. I'm going to select this option here so that you see what happens. You don't always have to do this. Okay. Basically, what's going to happen is that a list will be created inside the CRM with these three contacts that we are importing. This question here, I agree that all contacts in this import are expecting to hear from our organization. I have a prior relationship with these contacts and have emailed them. Look, HubSpot is trying to make sure that you understand the following. You should not market to people that are not expecting to hear from you, right? So if by any chance you're importing a list of contacts that you purchased and those people are not expecting to hear from you, look, HubSpot is not going to block your process, right? HubSpot is not going to say, hey, hey, don't import these people. They are not expecting. HubSpot is trusting 
in your good faith here, so to say. But there is a scenario where because those people are not expecting to hear from you, people start tagging you as spam and this hurts your email sender reputation. And then HubSpot can then, yes, limit your, you know, your, your email sending ability, so to say. So this can cause a lot of harm if you're emailing people they're not expecting to hear from you. For now, all you have to do is check this checkbox here so that you can finish the import. If this box is not selected, you cannot, you're not allowed to click on the finish import. Okay. So this is basically a reminder. HubSpot is saying, Hey, you know, these people are expecting to hear from you. Okay. That's basically what's happening here. And so finalize marketing contacts. Set this contacts as marketing contacts. What is this? When you purchase a paid HubSpot plan, you have a number of marketing contacts. Marketing contacts are contacts set as marketing, meaning you are intending to market to them. You're intending to send them emails. If you're importing a list of people that you're not intending to market to them, this can be off. You don't have to tick this box here. Okay. A marketing contact is a contact inside HubSpot that is set as marketing contact, meaning it's someone that you're expecting to, to market to. This is important because this affects your billing. So how much you're paying for HubSpot, right? On a free version of HubSpot, you have access to a number of marketing contacts. If you want more than that, then you have to pay. So this impacts your billing. I'm going to leave this unticked for now and I'm going to click on uh, finish report, import, sorry. And HubSpot is importing my list. And so here I can see in the import section that HubSpot imported three new records, meaning these three new records, Sarah, Mary, and Sam, they were not previously in my CRM. HubSpot simply imported them. HubSpot created contacts for them. If they were already in my CRM, HubSpot would have updated them. So I would see this number here. Okay. Let's go to our CRM and see our contacts there. And here are the contacts that we created together through the import. Just so that you know, sometimes it might, it might take a little bit of time. You know, you can just go import your contacts, go and do something else, come back to HubSpot and they will be there. Okay. So in case your contacts are not immediately there after you do the import, just wait a few minutes and you can head back to your CRM. Great. So in this lecture, you learn how to import a contact file into HubSpot. Uh, this is a list with contact information, right? Your email list, uh, where you have your prospects, customers, and so on. Don't forget you can use the exact same logic to import other types of data into HubSpot as well. So the same way you can import a file with contact information, you can import a file with company information, deal information, and so on. And the logic is the exact same. Okay. So the only difference is that when you're setting up your import file, your column headers, in this case, they will be other types of properties, right? Perhaps company properties, deal properties. It really depends on what you're trying to import, but the logic itself, the process itself is the exact same. So you can import different types of data into HubSpot by following this process that we learned in this lecture. Okay, awesome. So now that we have data inside our HubSpot CRM, we tackled, you know, how to create contacts manually in the previous lecture. We also learned how to import files in this lecture here. Now it's time to move forward and talk a little bit about other things that you can do inside your HubSpot account. In the next lecture, we're going to learn about HubSpot custom properties. What are custom properties? Let me just tell you a little bit about the topics so that you make sure that you're not going to miss the next lecture. HubSpot custom property is a property that you create. So the same way we have HubSpot default properties, such as first name, last name, city, email, and so on. You can also create your own HubSpot custom properties for situations when you want to store specific types of information inside HubSpot and you don't really find properties for that. Right. And, and so we, what we're going to do is is we're going to learn how to create different types of custom properties in the next lecture. Really important aspect of using the HubSpot CRM well, you know, and it suits your business needs. Okay, enough talking here. Don't forget that all the lectures inside this HubSpot free course are in a dedicated playlist here in my YouTube channel.